In today's video we're going to look at a configuration guide for the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. We'll focus on the throttle prop and condition settings for turbo props. For single engine I've chosen the exceptional Kodiak 100 from Simworks Studios. And for dual engine the popular Twin Otter from Aerosoft. Welcome to the Sim Hangar. my name's Mark, thanks for watching and let's get started. So let's start with Simworks Studios truly excellent Kodiak 100. But bear in mind that this config will work with almost any turbo prop, and the binding selected will probably work with other throttle quadrants as well. I have done an earlier video on the Kodiak 100, and that was late December. Some subscribers asked that I go through it in a little bit more detail, which I'll do here, and also it has a change. Thanks very much to Energy Jim P, who has improved on my original config, and that's included here. From the world map, select the Kodiak 100, any version will do. Note this is a payway aircraft. If you haven't got it and you want to follow along, then I suggest the Cessna Caravan 208 Bravo. Select any airport, as once we've finished our configuration, we'll want to test that it works. Once we're on the runway, let's head to the control options menu so we can start our configuration. Note I'm using axis 1, 3 and 5 for throttle, prop and mixture or condition lever respectively. You of course can use any axis that you prefer, just bear in mind that the axis and any button assignments may be different. I prefer this more spaced out setup, but it'll also make us easier to transform this configuration for the Twin Otter later on. For the purposes of this configuration guide, I've chosen an existing profile by using the preset manager in duplicate, so that it copies across the light configurations, autopilot and so on. But I've deleted all the power management functions, throttle, prop and mixture, as you can see on screen, and my filters on assigned. It's up to you whether you want to do the same, or you can just take an existing configuration and adapt the changes. Make sure the Bravo Throttle Quadrant is selected from the top menu and you have selected the appropriate profile that you're going to build on. In my case, I've just renamed it as Kodiak Blank. We're ready to go, let's change the filter to All. Then select Power Management and we're going to start by configuring the throttle. Click on Throttle to open up the sub-menu. We're looking for Throttle 1 Axis, there it is. Click in the box, select Start Scanning. And now we're going to move the throttle lever on axis 1 through its range but not into the detent position until it registers then validate. Now to configure our reverse thrust. We're looking for throttle 1 decrease just above that. Start scanning and we move the throttle into the detent position. Note for it to register I move in and out of detent position. If you don't do this with buttons it will not register correctly. Validate and we're done on the throttle. Let's move on and set up the prop. And again to start we're looking for propeller 1 axis. There it is, let's configure that. Start scanning and now I'm going to move the prop lever through its axis. It registers and now validate. Now it's time to set up prop feathering. To do that we need to scroll down and we're looking for hold propeller reverse thrust. There it is, let's select that. And I'm now going to move my propeller lever past the detent position so it picks up the button. Joystick button 26. Move it in and out of detent and then validate. Our next selection is right above. It's increase propeller pitch 1. Once again, click in the box. Move the propeller lever into the detent position so that it registers. We get a warning message that this is already allocated to something else. We know that. Move the propeller lever out of the detent position so it fully registers and now we can validate. So far this is the same as my previous configuration but now for the change. We're going to add another function and it's propeller 1 pitch high. Let's select that. This will stop the propeller pitch from jumping fully forward when we take it out of feather. And a very important point here or it won't work. Change the action type for on press which is default to on release. This helps to control the propeller pitch movement when it's coming out of feather. And once again I'm now going to move the prop lever in and out of the detent position. Warning message comes up, two other actions already allocated to that but we know that, we'll validate. You should also note that this configurator is very buggy and does not always retain 
the settings or bindings set. So it's always worth going back in and checking, especially if you have changed it from on press the default to on release. Nine times out of ten, it wouldn't have recorded it. You need to do it twice. Let's check that now. To do so, we click in the box. And as expected, it didn't record it. Change the action type to on release and validate. And I'm going to check it again. OK, this time it's held it. One thing I forgot to do was untick the reverse axis. You should do this for the throttle axis as well. If at any time you find the axis is working in reverse, just simply come back to the mapping and either tick or untick the reverse axis box as needed. OK, we're done with the prop. Let's move on now to the condition lever. In a non-turbo prop, we would set the mixture, but in a turbo prop, we choose condition lever. From the power management tab, I'm choosing condition levers. That opens the sub-menu, and we're looking for condition lever 1 axis. There it is. And we'll register it by moving the condition lever axis 5 on our Bravo throttle quadrant. Joystick R, axis X, happy with that, validate, and that's now assigned. Right above that is condition lever 1 cutoff, we'll choose that. Move the condition lever into the detent position. Joystick button 28, validate. One more action we're looking for, and that's decrease condition lever 1. Slightly further up, there it is. We're going to select the box, start scanning, and once again, Move the condition lever into the detent position. Warning message comes up. We know we're happy with that and validate. And now one last action to complete our configuration for the SimWorks Studios Kodiak 100 or for any single turboprop. You'll find when you move the mixture or condition lever axis, although physically on the Bravo you're not at the detent position, in Sim it's already cut the fuel off. So we're going to make one more adjustment as sensitivity to the axis so we don't end up cutting the fuel off intentionally. So from our menu we're going to select sensitivity, move our condition lever on the Bravo so we can correctly identify the axis. And the change here that I'm going to make is to the extremity dead zone and I'm going to move that to plus 20%. I leave everything else as default. Done? Now let's go give it a test in Sim. Don't forget to apply and save. We'll test the throttle first, throttle advance, and then after that we will test the reverse thrust. That's working as intended. And now to check the movement of the prop lever. Move the prop lever all the way through its axis doesn't go into the feather position, now into the detent, and it moves into the feather. Now to take it out again, and it doesn't jump forward. That's working perfectly. And lastly, the condition lever. I can move it to down to the detent position, and it only moves to low idle. To move it into the fuel cutoff position, I need to move it into the detent position. Fuel is now cut off and the engine will now stop. This is the perfect opportunity to check that the prop is feathering. I'm now moving the prop into feather. We can see that the prop is feathered as expected. When I move it out of feather the prop should move. That's perfect. The Twin Otto 4 Microsoft Flight Simulator from Aerosoft has proved a very popular aircraft. number of recent updates has improved it enormously, and it's a fun and challenging aircraft to fly. Setting up twin turboprops in Microsoft Flight Simulator is a little bit of a challenge. Due to certain limitations of the software, it's not perfect, but we're pretty much there. Any suggestions for improvement are gratefully received. Pop them in the comments below. Select the Twin Otter as your twin turboprop. Any variant will do. You could also, of course, choose the King Air 350i. Start on a runway. Engines running. And to our control options menu. Make sure the Bravo throttle quadrant is chosen. 
I'll be building this profile on top of the one that we've just created. From the Preset Manager, choose Duplicate and then Rename. What name you give it is up to you, then click OK. This profile now has all the bindings that we applied in creating the profile for the Kodiak 100. We'll build from this. I've set up my Bravo Throttle Quadrant ready for dual prop. And because of the axes that I set up the throttle, prop and condition levers on for the Kodiak, I will not have to change those. I just need to add a second engine to this profile in effect, with a few minor adjustments. From the menu I'm going to select Power Management and then Throttle. My filter is still on Assigned, so I'm now going to change that to All. Now I'm going to page down, I'm looking for Throttle 2 Axis. I know you're here somewhere. Up oh, there you are. Click in the box. I'm now going to assign the second throttle on axis 2. It's registered. Now validate. I now have throttle 1 and 2. Now to set the reverse thrust, I'm looking for throttle 2 decrease. There it is. Scanning box. And then move the lever into the detent position. Then back out again. It's registered. And we can validate. Throttles are done. Let's go on to the prop. Here it gets a bit more interesting and complex. The first thing we can do is delete propeller one pitch high. Clear current input and validate. The propeller levers don't have a tendency to jump forward in the twin otter. I've now selected propeller two axis. Going to move my second prop on the fourth axis. It registers and validate. So I now have two props, prop one and prop two. You can always check they've been activated by simply moving along the axis. That all looks fine, we can continue. Ah, I always forget to uncheck the reverse axis box. I'll do that for the throttle as well. Right, back to the prop. And we're looking for hold propeller reverse thrust. But as we configured earlier, the detent on throttle 1 has already taken up that box. It was joystick button 26. But we need to assign another button to the same function. When this is required, we can then select the second box. Never select the second box if the first box is empty, as there's a chance your configuration will not hold. Ideally, to make this configuration foolproof, we would need hold propeller reverse thrust 1, 2, 3 and 4 and so on. But that is not available. So we have no option other than to use the same mapping. So click in the box, start scanning, and I'll move my second prop lever into the detent position. It's joystick button 27. Again, I move it in and out to register, then validate. Now we have buttons 26 and 27 allocated to the same function. As mentioned, this is not perfect and does create a few anomalies, but by and large it works very well. And I haven't been able to find any better solution at this time. Let's carry on with our config and we're looking to increase propeller to pitch. There it is, you know the drill by now. And once again, we're going to allocate it to the detent on prop number 2, button 27. That's done. We can now just take it out of detent, validate, and we're done with our prop configuration. The final part, let's move on to the condition levers and configure those. As before, I do the axis first. So I'm looking for condition lever 2 axis. There it is. Click in the box and we can start scanning. And I'm going to move condition lever number 2 on the 6th axis. That's registered and validate. For the Kodiak 100 we were able to restrict the movement of the condition lever. With the Twin Otter that's not possible. So we need to delete condition lever 1 cutoff and also decrease condition lever 1. And then lastly we also have to go back to our sensitivities for our condition lever 1 joystick R axis X and hit reset to set it back to default. The Twin Otter appears to have only fuel on and fuel off. Before giving it a try in sim we can do a quick review of the bindings that we've set up for throttle, prop and condition levers. That all looks OK. I'm just checking through to make sure that all the reverse axis boxes have been unchecked. Oh, there's one there that I need to do. And now we can save and give it a try. First of all, I'll check throttles 1 and 2, forward reverse and reverse thrust. 
as you can hear they've really sorted out the sounds on this twin otter they're really good now now checking engine one and engine two pulling right back and now engine one into detent and now engine two into detent engine one out of feather and now engine two out of feather and now to pull back on the condition levers which will cut the fuel fuel cutoff worked fine I've now got the engines running again and I want to test the feathering on each engine for each prop first one engine and then the next I would comment that this works most of the time but not all the time for both engines I hope that in future Microsoft will give us hold reverse thrust for each engine Before closing off, one final comment. Some of the actions in the Kodiak and in the Twin Otter are not configurable. That is because they're using non-standard LVARs to configure that action. To configure this, you would need a third-party product. At this time, they cannot be configured in Microsoft Flight Simulator. That completes my configuration guide for the Kodiak 100 and the Twin Otter. The principles can be applied to any single or twin engine turboprop. These are currently two of my favorite aircraft. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found this useful and informative. Don't forget to subscribe if you want more like this. Stay well, keep the blue side up. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.